Peter Sam was feeling depressed. He was still getting over his accident, but he wanted to start work again. But Sir Topham Hat wouldn't let him. Another day's rest will do you good, he said. Besides, I've got a surprise for you. For me, sir? How nice, sir! What is it, sir? Wait and see. The surprise was Scar Lowy. Oh, said Peter Sam, I'm glad you come home. They have lit Scar Lowy's fire and he sizzled happily. I feel all excited, he said, just like a young engine. Now tell me all the news. I see you met Rusty, said Peter Sam. Then Scarlowe's driver interrupted. Duncan is stuck in a tunnel. Come on, Scarlowe, we'll have to get him out. So Scarlowe set off to find his train. So he found the works train and he sizzled down the line. What a splendid day, chanted Scarlowe. Soon, they arrived at the tunnel. Duncan was cross. I'm a plague speaking engine, puffed Duncan. Tunnels should be tunnels, not rabbit holes. This railway is no good at all. Don't be silly, said his driver. This tunnel is quite big enough for engines who don't rock and roll. When Scarlowe heard about it, he puffed slowly into the tunnel. So Scarlowe buffered up to Duncan. So Duncan felt like moving, and Scarlowe pushed alongside. So Scarlowe parked the flatbed, and he helped Duncan along. Duncan grumbled all the way home, but Scarlowe paid no attention. Sir Topham Hatt spoke severely to Duncan. Listen to me, he said. There is nothing wrong with that tunnel. Tunnels are definitely not dance floors, and you are not a rock star. Then Sir Topham Hatt gave his full attention to Duncan's funnel. If it happens again, he ended honestly, I will cut your funnel in half. In other words, your career is ahem, on the line. Need I say more? Duncan knew Sir Topham Hatch was joking, and he had to stay in the shed for a while. Well, at least for the whole evening.